Jose. And we're your token theater friends, giving a people of color perspective to the performing arts. We see a lot of theater. How much theater do we see? Not a lot. So much. Couple. We, we, we never go home, really. Who has, out? Who has a home life anymore? You know? I don't need a home. I have theater. <laughs> Anyway, well, today we have a wonderful interview for you all. Who did we talk to? Our guest today is Telly Leong, who's currently playing Aladdin on Broadway. Telly's also been on Broadway in Allegiance and Rent, and he's also been in plays like The World of Extreme Happiness, which was so good. Which was intense. Yes. Like, and Tully's also done In Transit and Flower Drum Song. He's been around. He's wonderful. And he also recorded this, oh my god, so wonderful cover of Mariah Carey's mm -hmm. All I Want for Christmas is You. And all we wanted for Christmas was Tully, and we have him. So let's go check out the interview. <laughs> And we're here with Telly Leon. Hi. Hello, thank you for joining Hi, us. Guys, I'm Happy glad to be here. Holiday. Happy holidays. I love how festive you made <laughs> the room today. I love it. We did it just for you. She told her ahead of time to, you know. I know. I've recorded it in my reds and greens. I know. <laughs> but congratulations on doing Aladdin. Thank you. Wrapping it up. Yeah, I, I've had an amazing time, and it's mm -hmm. it's my you know it's my like twelve year old dream come true to like be a Disney prince on Broadway. So it's. <laughs> I mean, not only do you get to be a leading man on Broadway, but then you get to bring to life this character that you fell in love with as a kid. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of a, a magical experience, and um, and I've had a really really good time yeah. at the New York City Theater, and I'm and I'm still there. I'm still there until February seventeenth is my last show. So if you haven't come to see Aladdin yet, swing on by. Come down and see us in Agrabah. Yeah. It's warmer there than it is in New York today, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing in New York today. No, we, we recently just saw you in the show, and I oh. joked afterwards, like, Aladdin, it's more like abs Aladdin. <laughs> like, we show a lot of skin in Agrabah, for sure. It is the desert, so <laughs> it's dramaturgically correct that we are showing that much skin, for sure. But, yeah, but we're, um, but, you know, that show keeps you very fit. You know, Casey mm -hmm. Law, that choreography is, um, it's really incredible, and it's so fun to dance every night. I mean, we're doing everything from, you know, traditional Broadway style theater dance to tap dancing mm -hmm. to to um, to ballroom dancing you know so there's yeah. everything in that show and it's all sort of influenced by Bollywood and a little bit by by um, by dances from the Middle East as well and so it's um, it's a really cool kind of a fusion and that trust me doing that show eight times a week keeps you in ad lad and shape <laughs> <laughs> and he also got me in the Christmas mood with your cover of Mariah's oh my, oh my gosh Christmas thank you Day. Because that's also, I would think, like, you know, like, a young boy's, like, dream, right? Like, well, yeah, I mean, growing up as a 90s kid, you know, like, I, I remember having my three-CD disc changer double cassette Ooh. deck boombox that you got for Christmas, and, and you would just, you know, because you couldn't afford to go and buy everything at T Tower Records or at Sam Goody. I mean, mm -hmm. are there, like, record stores? Like, for all those out there who remember the record stores, right? But, but like... There's, like, a little thing that you put... Yeah. <laughs> so you would, like, tape songs off the radio. Yeah. Especially, oh, like, you would, yes. like, just, like, if you heard something on the radio, you'd catch, like, and now Mariah's new... And then you go, oh, and you'd oh, yeah. run to the radio and you'd, like, tape it. To yes, it, right? yeah. And so Mariah was definitely one of those artists when she came up in the 90s. You know, I was... I was in middle school, and, like, that was... Mm -hmm. That was a big musical influence on me. And so, um... There were many reasons why we decided to do the cover. You know, the main reason is that we, we really wanted to put the, put the single out there for digital download and for streaming so that um, it could raise money for ASEP, which is Artists Striving to End Poverty, an incredible organization that was started by um, some Juilliard students as well as Mary Mitchell Campbell that seeks to bring arts to underserved communities. And the idea behind that is, you know, that the arts, I know that for all of us who love the arts, that we can, we can pinpoint a moment in our lives when the arts kind of saved us and mm -hmm. saved our lives and showed us what was possible. And in those underserved communities, sometimes they don't have that. So the mm -hmm. idea is to bring arts to them so that they so that it opens up a whole new world of possibilities <laughs> for them to kind of to kind of go, oh right, like, you know, there's possibility here and there's possibility there. And the, the goal is to kind of break that cycle of, of poverty. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I don't need 
to hang my stockings there upon the fireplace. Santa Claus can make me happy with a toy on Christmas Day. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true, baby. All I want for Christmas is you. And we also love Mariah, and I love, love Mariah. And we love the holidays. We want to play a little game with you that we're oh, calling. Uh oh, and have... you have a prize. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Great. A little game we're calling Have Yourself a Very Mariah Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to read you some lyrics and you have to tell me if they're a Mariah Carey song or a Christmas song. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. okay. Right. So uh, I'm going to do three questions uh -oh. and if you get two out of three, you're a winner. Yay! Okay, good. And we're going to start off with a pretty easy one. I okay. Think. So, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> Boy, I, I'm already laughing. Boy, I want to know. Lying that you're sexing me when everybody knows. <laughs> It's clear that you're upset with me. That is for sure a Mariah lyric. It would be kind of creepy as a Christmas lyric, right? Like, so I'm going to say Mariah for sure. You Final are, answer. Yeah. You are correct. Yay. Good. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> awesome. And I grew up poor, and so being, and, and so I, I always found the arts, you know, very, like something that I couldn't participate in because yeah. like, like you don't see yourself, and it's like, how do you make money doing this? Yeah. And so for you, what was your journey into this very competitive field? Well, it's interesting. I I feel like I stumbled into it. You know, I went to a math and science high, high school in New York City. It's called Stuyvesant High School. I mean, you, it's a public school. You have to test to get in. So it's like a school full of brainiacs. And really, I started doing theater as an escape. You know, I was like, God, one side of my brain is really being stimulated by physics and biology and calculus. And I was like, I, I was hungry for the other side to get stimulated. And it was also where I found friends. Theater was where I found was the fun hang, right? Yeah. And, 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 um, and so I, I started doing theater in high school. And when it came time to apply to colleges, I said, gosh, do I really want to like, do I really want to be a doctor? I don't. I was like, well, I wake up every morning and all I think about is going to rehearsals for my high school musical. That's mm -hmm. all I want to do. And go to, go to chorus and go to band class and go to acting class, you know, so I, I quickly discovered being in that hyper competitive math science environment that I didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to find a place where I fit. And I think that's kind of how I journeyed into theater. And, um, and really now it's so weird looking back on it, I go, gosh, like the hang, like it's all about the hang, right? And I even look back on it now, like why am I, you know, being on Broadway is hard. You know, being on Broadway is hard, and getting to Broadway is hard, and getting to Broadway again and again is hard, right? That's just the truth of it. And you kind of go, why do I keep doing it? I go, the people. Like, there is nothing like being surrounded by theater people and theater artists, even when you're not working. You know, even when you're not working and you've gone to that audition and you've bombed it, you know, and, and in this very building at you know, Ripley Greer, when you've had a crappy audition, you can call one of your friends and go, I just had a really crappy audition. And they get it, and that community is there to bolster you in the good and the bad times. So Aladdin's based on the Disney movie. Yeah. And then this season, also, you're going to get to do like the reverse. Like you're going to get to see yourself on screen in Allegiance. Yeah. Is, how is that experience? Like, is it surreal to be? Because like, I'm like, I'm so excited to be seeing Telly perform. But you've never had that chance. I mean, you know, my first exposure to musicals was not Broadway. You know, growing mm -hmm. was not. Even though I grew up in New York City and Broadway was only a 40-minute train ride away from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, where I grew up, like, my parents are immigrant parents. They're blue-collar immigrant parents. My mom was a seamstress. My dad worked in restaurants. They knew nothing about Broadway, nor could they afford to take me to a Broadway show, right? My first exposure to Broadway was Into the Woods on PBS, watching it on TV. And I didn't, I didn't know that that's what that was called. I didn't know that it happened on Broadway. I didn't know that, that that's what a musical was. I didn't know who Stephen Sondheim was. Do you mean? And I just knew that I loved watching this thing happen, this live performance happen. And so, you know, thank God. Thank God for, for, for recorded, you know, televised and productions of Broadway. Otherwise, I would have never been exposed to that. So now that I'm in, you know, not just Allegiance, but I'm also in that Rent final, the, the film live on Broadway, to know that that 
lives forever, and there will be generations of people. You know, I still get people going at the Aladdin stage door. You're the guy in the green hat in Rent, or you're honest living. <laughs> you're honest living in Rent, and people like even though Allegiance mm-hmm. only ran for four months on Broadway. You know, now Fathom Events. This is uh, this is. I can't even remember how many encore presentations they've done of this since the show has closed in 2016. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Fathom Events has decided to replay it and do an encore presentation every year right around Pearl Harbor Day mm-hmm. because of the historical significance of that and as it relates to the Japanese American internment and allegiance. And so, um, at the stage door at Aladdin, still today, even though the show has been closed for two years, people still say, "I loved you with allegiance," and it's because Fathom has found a way to take. Broadway, this thing that only happens in our small little campus here in New York City, <laughs> and they're bringing it to your local movie theater for one night only. Mm-hmm. And it, so it feels, it still feels like an event. It still feels like we're all like we're all going to curtain at seven thirty. But it, but it, but we're doing it all around the country in like hundreds and hundreds of theaters at the same time. I mean, that's what's really cool about yeah. it. So yeah. are you ready for your second question? Yes, I'm so excited. Okay. Okay, let's take the road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather. Oh, this is a, 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 it's a Christmas carol. Yes, correct. Yeah, I love it. Yay. That is not Mariah, for sure. <laughs> no. If there was, you know, you found a lamb and a genie comes out. Oh, gosh. And you get to ask three wishes for the theater industry. For oh, maybe. That's a really, really good question. Wish number one would be for. And, and I know many of them in New York City, for some, for, for some amazing composer and lyricist team that has been struggling and plugging away in New York City to finally get their show produced. And that it has really original and exciting parts for actors, and it's also telling a story we've not heard. I think that's wish, that's for sure wish number one. Wish number two, more Broadway theaters. Because I know for a fact that when Allegiance was waiting for a Broadway theater, we waited two years for a theater. Yeah. Just yeah. because there are so many shows, there's more shows than there are theaters mm-hmm. in New York. And so I would wish for there to be more Broadway theaters so that we get more opportunities. And my third wish, really, is, um, is besides giving those composers that haven't gotten the shot to really, to really tell their story, is to have... Um, Performers, performers of color that haven't gotten their opportunity to do it. Do you mean like you know for sure my Asian brothers and sisters that are not re- represented as as heavily on Broadway and also you know like I'd love to see more Middle Eastern actors on Broadway. I'd love to see more Native American actors on Broadway. I'd love to see Alaskan you know actors. I, I just love to see kind of um, the theater represent the diversity of the world. You're the rare Asian American I've seen who have been a leading man. Multiple times, like right? you and Jose Lana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, maybe Dan you know, James can sometimes when he wants to yeah. <laughs> come over. But I've talked to so many actors of color, and they and they talk about like they're always playing supporting roles. And so when it comes to being a leading man, like there there's very little experience, so you don't know how to occupy that space when, yes. when you get the opportunity. So what advice do you have? For, pe- for people of color who haven't been center stage, and how do you... Yeah, that's, 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 a, great, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I ever sought to be a leading man. Mm-hmm. I think I just, and the real honest truth is, as an actor in New York City, I just, I just, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I never sought to be a leading man, I just sought to keep working. Mm-hmm. Right, like, really, that's what it was. And, and mm-hmm. if, if an opportunity presented itself to me, you know, like, for example, I, I really, Allegiance was my first time really being a leading man, that's, that's what was called for in the script. Those were my duties in the script. That's it. That is how I will serve this play. And as an actor and as a performer, that's the first thing I look at. I go, what is my purpose? What is my purpose in this play as this character? Right, I'm the leading man. I'm the comic relief. I'm the, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm the character that dies, that breaks your heart. AKA Angel, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So like, that might not be the lead, but might be a supporting character. And you kind of go, okay, like, what is my purpose? And how do I serve this? How do I serve the play? And I think if you kind of always lead with that, you know, sometimes those roles are supporting roles. Sometimes those roles are ensemble roles. So sometimes those roles are leading roles. And you kind of just have to, you have to look at it that way. Um, And I think that's kind of my key into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because... Uh, you know, I, I love I love when people think, well, wow, what are you going to pick as your next project? And I go, guess what? Actors, unless you're Meryl Streep or Julia Roberts <laughs> or Harrison Ford, like you're not, you know what I mean? Like you're not picking your projects. You kind of, you kind of 
auditioning is your job and you go and you audition for everything and you go, yeah. okay, that gig hired me. I guess my next role is blank. Do you know what I mean? Like I went from being a leading man in Allegiance to being in a very ensemble show like in Transit where we were all, we, I mean, there, that show could not exist. There was no lead in that show. That was 11 people singing in harmony for 90 minutes mm -hmm. and everybody, everybody pulling their weight and a true ensemble effort. And so um, that was the next job. And I love doing that. I love, you know, and, and I don't really prefer one to the other. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've had a really great experience being a leading man in Allegiance and in Aladdin. That's been really great to lead a company in that way. But I've also really relished those opportunities where I get to be part of something, part of a whole that is, that, that is greater because we're all so strong in it. You know, Godspell, Rent, In Transit, those ensemble shows mean a lot to me. Um, they mean just as much to me as being a lead in a show. You are already a winner, but if you want to go for a perfect score, okay, okay, yeah, great. One more question. Okay, great. Overachieve. Like That's that. right. <laughs> you can find love if you search within yourself, and the emptiness you felt will disappear. Oh yeah, and then a hero comes along. I know this song. I know this tune. That's Mariah. But it's almost like a Christmas. Song. I like that. Yeah. It's also it has Christmas sentiments, so a little bit of a tricky one. But yes. That's a Mariah. That's a Mariah standard. I oh, air winner, and we have a we have a a stocking. Yes. Oh, a hat. A hat stocking. Brilliant. Yes. Oh my it's, gosh. It's plain. Oh, that's the best. That's the best gift. I love that. Thank you so much. I want to see what's in here. Cost of living. Yeah, won a Pulitzer. Oh my gosh, amazing. How I learned to drive. Awesome. Paul oh my god, these are. I like lucked out. These are amazing. <laughs> the humans, which I loved on on Broadway. That was great. And sweat. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to dig yes. into these. These are coming with me when I take my vacation from Aladdin after I leave on February 17th and I find a beach because New York City is cold. <laughs> I will take I will take these to the beach with me and, and dive in. That's awesome. Thank you. But what's your next project after Aladdin? I have a whole bunch of concert gigs coming. So, oh. um, so I'm definitely going to have some West Coast concert gigs lined up. Uh, I know I'm in I'm, I'm near I'm in the San Francisco area. I'm going to be in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm going to be in San Diego. So you can check out www.tellyleon.com for those dates when they get released. Um, and I'm also doing a really fun symphony gig out in Memphis as well in April, um, which will be really, really fun with one of my favorite conductors, Bob Moody. He's out at the Memphis Symphony. We're doing a really fun um, evening of Beethoven and the Beatles. So I won't be handling any of the Beethoven stuff. I'll be handling all the Beatles stuff. But, um, but it's, I think it's going to be a really, really great time and something super interesting and, and totally out there. And I've never been to Memphis, so I'm really excited. I've never been to you know, Tennessee at all, so like, I'm yeah. really excited to you visit. eat. Uh, absolutely. Like, that, that was like the, the biggest incentive <laughs> to go down there. So, um, and again, people can check out those dates on my website. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I'm excited for that and, and to read some plays on a beach. Like, I'm really excited for that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shelly. I'm Thank you. I'm going to cross my fingers for Mariah Mozart next. Oh, Mariah Mozart. Done. Done. I'm going to pitch it. Happy, Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Because this week we're reviewing Christmas shows. It's like a Christmas themed episode, and there's King Kong involved again because nothing says Christmas like Kong. I have no idea how we decided this. <laughs> but thank you for watching. You, if you subscribe to us on YouTube and click the little 
bell, which is not Christmas themed, but that's fine. It will let you know when we have new videos. And, and in the new year, we're doing something very exciting. What are we doing? In January 12th, we're gonna be at Broadway Con, and we are very happy to announce that our guests <laughs> are going to be composer Max Vernon and the incredible performance artist, playwright, everything, mm -hmm. Diana. So we expect to see you there. Yeah, there's gonna be glitter. And remember, theater's more fun when you take a friend. Bye. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.